I think it's like you, you try to pull something that's like stuck. There we go. Quench it. And put the axe in here. Copper axe hundreds. Perfect, right. They've got a copper axe. Hopefully that's a lot of wood. Uh, I will say, this game has a lot of buildings. A hell of a lot. Like, if you click on just uh, extracting, you've got, like, well, woodshed, woodshed 2, excavation. We don't have an excavation shed. That's one thing we, we unlocked yesterday. Uh, if I go to production, you've got three different types of workshops, smithies, sewing huts, kitchens. And it looks like you have to build the new building every time. I'm not sure that they upgrade. Which is kind of weird. This is, uh, for, I've got a few people that have been playing this, like, in small groups. Or, like, they've played it with their other half, and they're absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. Because you're basically, you, you, you're decorating a village together. And you're making decisions as to how to produce certain things. It's, it's a perfect co-op game, to be honest. Absolutely perfect. And there's no competitive nature. Like... Unless you want to do... You can add competitive nature to it if you wanted. You can have separate villages, I guess. Um, that could be pretty interesting. One of you could become, like, you know, um, a quarry master, where you have uh, excavation shacks and smithy set up, and the other one can look into, like, animal husbandry and have loads of different animals on, uh, on a farm. That'd be kind of cool, actually. So the way that AI works in this game, uh, a general breakdown, is your dynasty reputation is tied to the amount of people that will um, be allowed to be in your village, but you do have to go out and seek them. So through working out, playing the game, it looks like every hundred rep equals a new person. So we can have seven people in our village total um, doing stuff. And you've got to go seek out those those NPCs. You'll say like, you know, oh, started a new uh, new little town. Do you want in? And uh, when they join, they all have their own different traits and stuff. So if you like uh, micromanaging and putting the right people into the right areas, um, that's just like another layer of depth that you can really go into. I mean, once we've got enough bodies in the village to do jobs. I think that's when I'm going to start fine-tuning who does what. But right now, for me, it will just be... Get people in, get them gathering a little bit so that me and Frenata can kind of focus on... Um, the next part of our upgrade on the tech tree, or... Uh, maybe we want to go and specifically farm something so that the idle nature of the game still takes over and helps us out. Which is super cool. Lost the final question in our Team Jackpox murder party. Oh, buddy. Are you still doing Jackbox Weekly with uh, with your with your office crew? That's cool, man. Uh, let's take that. Take some of this. Eat some of that. That's good. Every Friday. That's nice, man. I'm still very envious of the fact that you get to uh, you get to do something like that within your work. It's really cool. Really cool. More workplaces need that. Doesn't matter what it is, you know. I used to encourage board games with my uh, with my um, team, uh, whether I was one of them or, or working as a I think you're supervisor a or a, uh, or as their manager. I'd just be like, you know what, we're playing this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a, some sort of uh, cue that came up when I was talking to her, and she was like, yeah, alcohol. Like, ah, yeah, that's good. All right, that's you then. I uh, accidentally walked past your house, and she goes, uh, luckily you're allowed to drink wine while pregnant. 
Well, my kid's going to get uh, an interesting birth, aren't they? Oh, God. It is a great way to keep up morale. You're completely right. Completely right, Jess. I feel like that's what workplaces need. Like, I came out of retail many moons ago. But when I was in it, I kind of wanted to be that person that would put a little bit of fun into the little things that you do. Like, for those of you that don't know, I used to work in a bakery, so... Making bread, making rolls, making cakes, you know, all of it. And, um... You try and make it fun. Whenever we, like, hired somebody new, you'd show them the ropes and you'd, you'd give it a, a cool little twist, but you wouldn't just give the twist for the new person. You'd also get other people that are in your workplace anyway involved in what's happening, because for them... They have the knowledge, they have the experience, they've worked in that place. So it's kind of like, you know, you breathe a bit of life into what they may feel as a bit of a mundane role at that time, or they're not quite enjoying their job. So, it's nice to, to, to do that. It's the one thing I miss, to be honest, about, about looking after a team. Making sure that everybody's looking, looking good and they're okay. I used to enjoy that a lot. Why did the baker have brown hands? He needed a poo. Well, I can safely say in all of my years of being at the bakery, <laughs> I've never seen that happen. But I'm not saying it's impossible. <laughs> oh my god. Love that. <laughs> oh, is it worse than a soul joke? I don't know, man. I love soul jokes. They're, they're great fun. <laughs> ah, do I bake raven? No, I bake apple pies and cherry. Uh, raven's not something that I've ever really used as, a, as an ingredient. I'm just going to let that one sit there for a little bit until you realise I'm joking. <laughs> and I know that you're addressing me. <laughs> you're probably there going, oh shit. What have I said? <laughs> oh, that's good, that is. Good meme. Good meme. Oh, I'm glad I gathered all that straw. Look at that. I'm going to need some more bloody logs though. Oh shit. There's the coat. I do bake. I, I still do li little bits and pieces. I don't do half as much as I used to. I mean, when I worked in the bakery, I'd be up at like half three in the morning. I'd be at work for four. Um, as soon as you walk in, you turn in ovens on. You're getting all of your flour. You're getting all your ingredients ready. Um, within about 10 minutes of being in the door, you've got your first mix in a mixer. And I used to work with like 32 kilo sized like capacity mixers. Technically, you could put more into it, but it would compromise the machinery and you'd end up with an engineer out every week fixing it. But, um, yeah, you'd get your first mix on and then you'd start looking at getting prepped for the rest of the day. You'd have your little sheet of how much you think you're going to be making throughout the day. And then as the shop opens, you're kind of adjusting it on the fly. If you're not that busy to begin with, then... You kind of want to lay off your production line a little bit. Give yourself a bit of breathe space. How do I get that up there? Do I have to go first person? No? Oh, is it the log? It's the log. Got it. Um, but I used to work for about four or five hours without a break. Not because I was told to, but because that's how I functioned. Um, it was a very much, it was a get up and go mentality, try and get everything done within the first three hours and then you'd have a little bit of an ease off the gas and, and chill, making a few extra bits or maybe you're not making as much because the shop isn't that busy um, and then you'd be checking on those that are making cakes and stuff or doing the donuts and you'd be like, right, do you need help with anything? Can I, can I assist anywhere? Or if they're naturally ahead they can come and help you in your job role which would be pretty nice you get a bit of a chat you get a bit of a chin wag with them um 
and then you go into the last half of the shift so i'd have my break after about five hours because the next few hours were pretty much uh top up any products that were missing or um because i worked as a team leader and worked up to a manager i still did baking whilst i was doing those roles because i never felt that i should stop doing that which a lot of management disagreed with, but I'd rather work with my workforce and I could still do my paperwork at the same time. So why not? I didn't want to miss out on baking. I fucking loved it. It was great. And you get to be with your team pretty much all day. So if anything happens or if they need you, you know, in the workplace or emotionally to kind of have a bit of a chat if they're having a bad day, you're automatically there for there, like for that person. Like, team morale was super, super important to me. And I've seen how, as being just a baker to begin with, management comes and goes and they didn't really look after you. And I always vowed, I, I never want to be like that. I want to be unique. I want to be there for the person. So I did. And if someone was on holiday and they didn't have any bakers to cover, I would happily say, you know what, well fuck my management responsibilities for a day i'm going in and working with the team and i'll catch up with it tomorrow unless it was health and safety health and safety took priority over everything every walk and talk that i did i would be like team they're coming in clean it up make it look good oh season change let's go my uncle had been building his house for 10 years i wonder how much time it would take him to build a settlement like this one Oh, interesting. So do we have carrots now? <gasps> Dude, the carrots are ready? The cabbage are. So it doesn't matter when it's planted, because the wheat's not ready. Oh my god, that cabbage was like an insta-grow? No worries, Duddy. Not Could a problem, man. Sun, I guess. We will catch you soon, man. All the best. Thank you for hanging out. And thank you for the uh, for the prime as well, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, it was really physical work, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Right. Uh... So, is it going to be better to harvest this with a scythe, do we think? Because it said something about harvesting with a scythe. Maybe I'll go... Did I make one, actually? I just tried looting uh, so cool. one of the carrot patches. I got ten carrots in one. Okay, uh, this can be used for harvesting crops. Not sure if it's just wild crops or my own. I guess we find out. I'll go and sickle the carrot, I guess. You got 10 carrots from one patch? Yep. Okay, so I can't left click with it. It's a bit sad. What happens if I collect? Did I got exactly. seven and four seeds. Did you get seeds as well? I got one seed. Okay, let me try again. I got eight and two. So this just seems like it's an RNG system. I don't think the sickle has any sort of impact with this. I'm guessing the sickle's more for wheat and anything that grows taller. Uh, I'm guessing you do oh. the farming since you have early experience cool. in it. I can do, yeah. Yeah, that's fine by me. Totally fine. Passion! Is it Passion? Was it Sean? Pass. Welcome in, man. I butcher Twitch names for a living. If you would like to phonetically type out your name, that would be great. Ah, oh, so I just need the sickle for wheat. Got it. Thank you for the lurk, though. Thank you, thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, and flax as well. Right. So it's only specific assuming, ones. Okay. Uh, after this season, you get... Um baby name uh oh yeah baby name gonna have to have a good think oh uh, the mine seems to refresh with the seasons i'm stuck after harvesting everything but more importantly it looks like the cabbage leaves stay in the ground the carrots came up oh, so it's so is this going to be a multi-spawner? Is that... Is that how this works? Could be. Okay, to the food storage. 
I guess I'll put it in the kitchen, actually, for now, because then we can cook with these carrots. How many did I get? 209! I'm still carrying the copper. No wonder I've got no bloody space. Oh, thank you for the clarity on the sickle, chat. Do, uh, do we unlock a scythe eventually? Does the sickle become a scythe and it has, like, a bigger AoE swing? Is that is that a thing? Does anyone know? Because that'd be kind of cool. Oh, yes. We've got logs coming through. Great, great, great. You can get one. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I love that. That's the information that we needed. Cheers, buddy. What a role player's death? Uh, I, I guess it depends what happens with our with our civilization. Uh, okay, the bags are eighty three percent. I think I try and sow some more seeds. So what are we in now? This is summer. Is that correct? Green was spring, uh, yellow summer. If you go tab and map, you can check. Oh. Yeah, summer. Thank you, thank you. I think um, autumn was brown. And it had leaves falling from the tree instead of an apple. Yep. Hang on, that's the king. The artwork looks like that hell card game that I played. It's got like the paper folded shadow half face. It's kind of cool. Uh. Very cool. All right, let's take some of this. Well, Grab yep. that. So we're not going to get a hundred percent back on seeds, but we're going to get close. Oh, that didn't work. What if I should run to town and get some different seeds? Probably going to be a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. We can't do carrots this season. We can still do cabbage. Uh, oh, it's only cabbage this season. So I'm guessing the orchards are the way forward. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we try and get uh, a tree seed. Okay. A plague mask. Oh. That'd be so good. Mm. So if I re-fertilize this, it, it just goes uh, into, into cool mode. Watch out when you eat the uh, old food. Yeah, did you get uh, toxicity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I saw that earlier. Oh, I need fertilizer? Shit. I was about to eat something that had like a lab and it was like 60% poisoning. <laughs> Good God. I guess we can put a barn here. Need a barn, don't we, to make the, uh, make the rot or whatever it was. Farming... Barn? Uh, okay, so animal feed, fertilizer, a makeable in this place. And it has a workbench in here. I'll bring it forward a little bit. And I'll bring it here, maybe. Yeah, that could be kind of nice. Getting a path to it's a little bit squibbly. Yeah, it's going to have to be like... Clearing out the mine every season might be a good idea. Okay. So I'm aiming for this gap here. I just like did the entrance, like the few deposits I had time for before the season change. And uh, the moment I got back now, it's everything respawned. That's nice. Got it, got it. Yeah, we definitely need to prioritize that then. Yeah, that looks nice. Need to get some uh, roads onto these areas as well. And then get some fencing down just to make it a little bit more cozy. Need logs. Of course we do. Okay, deposit these uh, cabbages. I guess I get more cabbage seeds down in the ground then. Uh, and fertilize it all. How many seeds do we have? 14. So I need 14. I need 23 fertilizer total. Cool, cool, cool. 23 fertilizers needed. If I can get the barn up and running. 
We don't have manure though. So I'm still going to have to buy it. How much money do I have? Not a lot. Are we using uh, leather for anything at the moment? Not really. So I'm thinking about crafting a bunch of bags and then selling them. So I'll try and get everything sorted in town and then mosey on over to a neighbouring town and go pick up some manure, get some more cabbages growing. Uh, I built a barn next to the smithy. It's in between the smithy and the storage house. Oh, so nice. I, just, I just need to get some logs into that and uh, then we can start to use the new workbench in there, which will be pretty good. And that's where we'll leave the playthrough for now. If you want to watch more then click on the next episode on screen, or why not check out some of Toasty's other content, as he plays other various video games and genres. Thanks for watching, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next episode.